Dear brothers and sisters, last week we talked about this particular hadith. Inna sidqa yahdi ila al-birr, wa inna al-birr yahdi ila al-jannah, wa inna rajula la yastuq hatta yuktaba inda Allahi siddiqa. That verily truthfulness leads to righteousness and righteousness leads to paradise. And a person will continue to tell the truth until they are written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a siddiq, as a person of truth. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ, and of course the opposite of that, وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ That verily lying leads to wickedness, all forms of wickedness. And wickedness leads to hellfire. And a person will continue to lie until they're written with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a liar. In another narration, and this is what I want to begin the discussion today with, there's a similar narration where the Prophet ﷺ talks about a different quality. And it's the only narration that is close to this one in terms of a quality that bears many traits that either is consequential in that it leads a person to paradise or it leads a person to hellfire. And this is a hadith from Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-haya'u min al-iman wal-imanu fil jannah wal-bada'u min al-jafa' wal-jafa'u fil nar Haya which I will do my best to define insha'Allah ta'ala. Haya, which is modesty, being bashful, being decent. Haya is in Jannah. Haya is in Jannah. It is a quality that is from Iman. You cannot have Iman without Haya. And Haya with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Iman. That a person feels a great sense of decency, modesty, bashfulness with their Lord and in all of their dealings. Haya is in Jannah. And on the opposite side, the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Bada. Al-Bada is from Al-Jafa. And Al-Jafa is in hellfire. Al-Bada and Al-Jafa gets a little bit more complex. Al-Bada is when a person is shameless, Bil-Qawl wal-Amal. They're shameless with their manners. They become foul. A foul-mouthed person is someone who's Badi. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying that Al-Bada, when a person becomes so shameless, then that is part of a greater disease, and that is called al-jafa. And the way that Imam Munawi rahimahullah ta'ala described al-jafa, he said that al-jafa refers to a person and al-qalb la yamilu li maw'idha wa la yakhsha'u li tathkira. That a person's heart becomes so shut off that even when they're reminded, they're so defiant and brazen in their disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't affect them anymore. Whereas when a person is just guilty of al-bada, you kind of remind them, tap them, tell them to, to calm down, you give them a reminder, and they might calm themselves down, they might listen, they might be receptive. But al-jafa is that a person has become so insolent, so defiant, so brazen in their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that even when they're reminded, everything about them has gone hard and cold, they don't listen anymore. They're just not moved anymore. And so from the greatest signs of al-jafa, in fact, that the scholars mention, is that a person is no longer moved by the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an has no effect on them. If a person tells them to, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they blow up on that person. You tell them, Ittaqillah, they'll respond back with something so grievous and so nasty that you'll never advise that person again because they've reached the point where they're openly defiant. So if you think of the stepping stones in the previous hadith, Al-Kadhib to Al-Fujur. A person lies a lot, and then a person gets to a point where they become a compulsive liar. And then a person starts to use that lying to establish trickery in all of their different fields of life. And they just disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many different ways. Here, a person who has no shame in their speech and in their actions will not just corrupt their manners, but eventually their morals. And no longer even be able to hear when someone is warning them and someone is telling them to be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So before I get to the ahadith about guaranteeing Jannah, there are a few ahadith where the Prophet says, I guarantee Jannah. Let's just sort out these two concepts, al-sidq and al-haya. We talked about truthfulness. When it comes to al-haya, the Prophet said, لِكُلِّ دِينٍ خُلُقٍ Every religion has its key attribute, its key characteristic. And the khuluq of Islam, the key attribute of Islam is haya, is modesty, decency. The opposite of shamelessness. That Muslims are decent and dignified and modest people. That is supposed to be the case at least. That that is the most apparent 
and most observable trait of the Muslims. And the Prophet ﷺ said, al haya la yati illa bi khair. That there is nothing that haya is in, decency is in, that this modesty comes into, except that it brings good. Why? Because sometimes shyness is looked down upon, shame is looked down upon. Even in the, in the society of the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ walked by a man that was talking to his brother and telling him to stop being so shy, stop being so modest. And the Prophet ﷺ said, leave him alone because the haya is from iman. That modesty is a good quality of Islam. It doesn't take away from confidence and being assertive, but that a person is, is humble, decent, modest, shy, bashful, does not stop them from also being impactful, confident, assertive where they need to be. Hayat rules out arrogance, not assertiveness. Hayat rules out indecency, not confidence. That's not what Hayat does. The Prophet ﷺ is the greatest example of that. In fact, if you need to raise your voice and cut people off and be shameless and curse to make your point, that means that what you have is very weak. So you're trying to overcompensate with bad manners and with loudness and being brazen. The Prophet ﷺ was dignified. He was assertive, confident, but dignified ﷺ. And everything about his demeanor represented what? Haya. He was a modest person, humble person. He never would become loud like a donkey braying in the streets alayhi salatu wassalam. Now this is interesting and there are multiple ahadith. Al-haya khayrun kullu, all of haya is good. And subhanAllah, I'll actually reference, you know, Shaykh Muhammad al-Shanawi wrote a paper called Haya More Than Just Modesty for Yaqeen Institute. And it, it goes through a beautiful breakdown of what haya is. And the last portion of that paper is how to cultivate haya, which with the time of the khutbah, I won't be able to get too deeply into that. What I wanted to talk about instead are three ahadith. Three ahadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, I guarantee Jannah. Now if you hear Rasulullah ﷺ say, I guarantee you Jannah, what are you going to do if you're a Sahabi? You're going to listen very closely. And he does this alayhi salatu wasalam three times. And they're all around the same theme. So let's go over these three ahadith insha'Allah ta'ala very briefly. Number one. Hadith Sahl ibn Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, very famous hadith in Al-Bukhari where the Prophet sallallahu said, مَنْ يَضْمَنْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ لَحْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ رِجْلَيْهِ أَضْمَنْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever guarantees for me what is between their jaws, meaning their tongue, and their private parts, what is between their legs, their chastity, their modesty, whoever guarantees modesty, and guarantees their tongue for me, I guarantee that person Jannah. Meaning if you are able to gain control over yourself in these two regards, in the way that you use your tongue and in your chastity, I guarantee you Jannah. SubhanAllah, when you look at the Qur'an, Allah Azza wa Jalla, as He describes the believers, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala mentions, عَنِ اللَّغْوِ مُعْرِضُونَ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ That they're people who guard their tongues and they guard their private parts. They guard their chastity. They stay away from zina and what leads towards zina. They stay away from adultery and fornication and what leads to it. Rasulullah said, if you figure those two things out for me, I will guarantee you Jannah. Now there's another hadith which all falls within this. So if you think about these two, what, how do you branch out from these two? And this hadith, I want you to try to memorize the traits, insha'Allah ta'ala. There's six traits that the Prophet ﷺ mentions. The first three of them should be very easy if you've attended the last few weeks of the khutbah. <coughs> it's hadith Abu Umama radiallahu ta'ala anhu, an authentic hadith. Qala alayhi salatu wassalam. Ukfulu li bi sittin, ukfulu lakum al jannah. That guarantee me six things, and I will guarantee you jannah. Six things. Rasulullah ﷺ said, إِذَا حَدَّثَ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلَا يَكْذِبُ When you speak, don't lie. Then he said, وَإِذَا وَعَدَ فَلَا يُخْلِفُ And if you make a promise, don't break your promise. وَإِذَا تُمِنَ فَلَا يَخُنُ And if you are entrusted with something, don't betray the trust. Basically, three traits when it comes to hypocrisy. قَالَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ وَغُضُّوا أَبْصَارَكُمْ وَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَكُمْ وَكُفُّوا أَيْدِيَكُمْ and the Prophet ﷺ said, guard your gaze, your eyesight, and guard your private parts, and guard your hands from hurting people. Interesting hadith. 
six traits. Rasulullah so said, if you have this, these six traits in your life, I will guarantee you Jannah. Now it's very interesting is that there are two fountains. The fountain of Sitq, the fountain of truthfulness, and the fountain of Hayat, which is modesty. And all of these traits are going back to the exact same two things if a person can maintain these things in their life. And you know what else the scholars mention? Is Rasulullah would never say, I guarantee you Jannah, with something that was not observable. All of these traits are observable. If you're trying to make a serious claim with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enter into Jannah, are you able to actually look through these six things and say that I am not guilty of harming in regards to these six things? Also, some of the ulama mention what? That when you look at these things that the Prophet ﷺ gives, they're all about restraint. And what does Allah Azza wa Jal say? A person who's able to restrain themselves from their desires, they have Jannah. When you think about Jannah, a person starts to think about Qiyamul Layl, a person starts to think about lots of fasting, a person starts to think about lots of charity. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying, Jannah first and foremost starts off with what? Guard these things. Guard yourself, protect yourself, restrict yourself in this regard. And lastly, dear brothers and sisters, there's an intersection between Haya and Sidq. An intersection, which is that the scholars say a lack of Haya in the deeper sense is even more subtle than hypocrisy. When we talk about the signs of hypocrisy, as it comes into terms with the way that you deal with people, there are obvious violations, obvious violations of contracts, obvious broken promises. There, you know, a person makes a promise and they break their promise. A person says something and they know that they're lying. A person is given a, a secret and they break that secret, or they're trusted with something and they break that trust. When it comes to haya, haya really speaks to the more subtle forms of indecency. What do I mean by that? A person who is sneaky with their lying, to where you could cheat someone right in front of you and they never even knew it. You didn't really break your promise, but you kind of did. Because a hayat refers to a person having a sense of shame and decency that they govern themselves by, where even where they have a loophole, they don't take advantage of the loophole. So the, the, the first implementation of this is the obvious, and that's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that Allah knows what the eyes, the fraud of the eyes, the betrayal of the eyes, what did we say that was? That a person is looking at you and you lower your gaze, as soon as they walk by, you look, because they no longer can see you. So in front of them, you maintained at least public decorum, but then you betrayed that when they were not looking anymore, when they no longer could tell. The Prophet ﷺ also said, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه لا ينبغي لصديق أن يكون لعانا It is not befitting for a صديق, for a truthful person to be in the habit of having a foul tongue, a tongue that curses people. And so haya and sidq are two fountains, they're two traits that the scholars mention are actually from the, the, the major two qualities that if a person observes them in all of their daily affairs then, <coughs> then they will be from those for whom Jannah is guaranteed. The last thing, dear brothers and sisters, and I'll end with the hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, is that both haya and sidq are reverence for the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you in areas where Allah Azza wa is most likely to be not remembered. What do I mean by that? When you go into salah, you say Allahu Akbar, and you start to think about the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. Haya, modesty and shyness is not cowardice. It's not because someone else is looking at you and maybe you're just not that aggressive, you start to calm yourself down. Haya is first and foremost with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you're shy from the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you. And so you know that Allah sees things that maybe the person in front of you is not seeing in the moment. You know that Allah sees you when other people do not see you and you're always thinking about the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I want you to think about it this way. You know how when a person gets into their salah stance to say, Allahu Akbar, and now let me think about Allah Azza wa Jal watching me and pay attention? Haya and sidq actually mean that you start to do that when you're engaging in a business contract. You think of Allah's sight as you get into a conversation. You think of Allah's sight upon you, Allah is watching me, and I'm making this promise right now. I'm not gonna break this promise. Allah is watching me and I'm about to speak. Allah is watching me and I'm in front of that computer screen, I'm in front of that phone and no one else sees me right now. Allah is watching me. So, haya and sidq means 
that the gaze of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you is guiding your societal transactions in the same way that a person would start to guide their worship. Where before I embark on something, when I'm about to do something, Ya Allah, I'm shy. I'm shy. I don't want to violate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told me not to violate. The last hadith where the Prophet ﷺ guarantees Jannah, and we'll end with this. Hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and it has several variations. Qala alayhi salatu wa salam, ana za'imun bi baytin fi rabad al-jannah, wa baytin fi wasat al-jannah, wa baytin fi a'la al-jannah. Liman taraka al-mira'a wa in kana muhiqqan, wa taraka al-kadiba wa in kana mazihan, wa hasuna khuluqahu. The Prophet ﷺ said in this authentic hadith in Al-Tabarani, he said alayhi salatu was salam, I guarantee a home in paradise. In the outskirts of paradise, the middle of paradise, and in the highest level of paradise. For the one who gives up an argument even when they're right. And for the one who gives up lying even when they're joking. And for the one who makes their character excellent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen.